Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to chapter 26. This uh, first video will give us a common language to understand what is happening on atomic scale. Okay, so if you're taking chemistry or you remember chemistry, this should be, you can go through this fairly quickly. Alright, so once upon a time, there was this guy called Rutherford who did an experiment called the Alpha Scattering Experiment or the Rutherford, Rutherford Experiment, sure. And you need to roughly know how this setup goes, so... Let's follow along, okay? So first things first, you're going to have a circular fluorescent screen. We'll figure out what, why is that so, ah? Uh? And you have a source of alpha particles coming out. Well, we can call it, I mean, the fact he used americium-241. It's just one of those, one of those elements that, uh, isotopes that release a lot of alpha particles, okay? And what are alpha particles, by the way? Just for your information, is positively charged. So think of it as positive particles, lah. Positive charge and, well, it's actually a helium nucleus. So, this is how you write helium nucleus, 4,2-H-E. Okay, so that's the main idea. You are taking a source and then what do you do with this source? Well, you take all these alpha particles and then you shoot it at a thin foil. So, you go pew, 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 pew. So, all these alpha particles will go inside here, beam off alpha particles. And this thin foil is like really, really thin. So... Try to get it like one layer of gold atoms or so, okay? Anyway, so when you shoot it through that, uh, what happens is uh, you will see some alpha particles go, follow through, and then hit the screen. When they hit the screen, then it will light up. Oh. So what I do is, he sit in the room and he wait for this fluorescent screen to light up. Ah, that got light. Okay, measure the angle. Okay, so for example, uh, if we take this as the vertical, if suddenly you see here light up, wow, that's mean here got an angle. So you measure angle and they observe the angle and they realize lots of cool things. Okay, so, yep, the beam of particles. They realize that, number one, most alpha particles are undeflected. Means you shoot straight, straight away come out. Pew, 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 just like go through. As if like nothing happened and then you shoot through the goal for it. Hmm, so it's like, okay, interesting. That's one observation. The second observation is that, oh, yo, some of the alpha particles are deflected, such as maybe this one. Okay, or actually, let's label this one lah. Okay, some of it go and then A suddenly deflect with um, some angle like that from the middle. Oh, so it's like, okay, some alpha particles are scattered, that's an observation. Then there are some, you notice, wow, really, really deflect or like shoot the go for and then pew, fly out. This one is like deflect, very large angle. Lah. So deflect with an angle greater than 90 degrees or so. Okay, almost as if it hit something and bounce back. So all these ideas, um, Rutherford, set, Rutherford sat down, observed this, draw together his experiment, came with a conclusion, and he decided that, hmm, apparently, according to what he discovered, all these gold atoms, okay, gold, all this, this, this thing is called, called gold atoms, these round balls, okay, he said the gold atom is probably like this, there's probably something in the middle called a nucleus, and there's a, you know, a space around this nucleus. Which is why sometimes, if you have this beam, let's say, going straight through, eh, it didn't hit any nucleus, so it just goes straight through. So that's observation one. Observation two, sometimes they deflect. Oh. Why is that? Ah? Like this one here, number two. See, it go kind of like pass through like that and deflect. Number three, sometimes if you go inside, you hit the nucleus and then you bounce back up. That's number three. Lor. So it's like, hmm, this is probably what is happening when all these alpha particles come in and interact with the gold foil. So, let me jump to here. These are the observations that Rutherford observed. The first one, we say most alpha, alpha particles pass through undeflected. Why? Eh? Because your atom is actually mostly empty space. So, if you look at uh, this one up here, for example, don't be deceived. Huh? You see this round ball is a solid. No, 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 no. Actually, it's just one nucleus. Then around there will be electrons. Huh? Very, very small. Okay? And the distance between your, I guess your nucleus to your first electron is super big. Like, if we put it to scale, if I'm a nucleus, 10 km away is my first electron swirling around me. Oh my goodness. So, mostly empty space. Okay, all this uh, thing here. Oops. I forgot to say this, not nucleus. Sorry, sorry. This one, empty space. Okay, so nucleus in the middle and then, of course, all the electrons around uh, then the second observation, you say, eh, why some of the alpha particles oh, come in and then they deflect at the angle, like they bend a little bit. 
Why? Well, that's because he came with the idea, hmm, this small angle of deflection uh, is because, yes, the center of the atom is small, but it's positively charged. So if you have something like this, okay, let's say this is your nucleus, positively charged. So if your alpha particle come in, they're all positively charged. La. So maybe, for example, uh, this one, your positive charge come in, you don't like the other positive charge, so it deflect. Okay, like charges repel because of the electric field of that gold nucleus. So, yeah, no, that's the second conclusion. If you have a positive charged nucleus, positive particle come in, oh, it will deflect and then go away. Okay, so that's the second observation. The third observation we mentioned, um, large angles of deflection, right? Some of it like bounce back and hit something. Okay, or in this case here, you see it come, bounce and hit something. That's because you hit the nucleus itself. So that would be, for example, here. You come in, then you hit the nucleus, which is full of stuff. What stuff is it? Well, we'll find out soon. And then you bounce back at a very large angle. So from that observation, Rutherford came up with the idea that, hmm, okay, there are large angles. I mean, we can call large angles more than 90 degrees, for example. And that is, yes, the anthem, center atom is small. Only a few, la, some only, I should say, not some, la. A few particles, once in a while. Center atom is very small, of course, positive charge, and very, very dense. So it's full of stuff in there, and it's positive charge. So you, when you hit the, the nucleus, pew, you go backwards. So that's why you can have things like perfect reflection. Wow, look at this. Particle come in, hit the nucleus, and then rebound back at the perfect um, 180 angle, if you want to call it that way. Okay, so that is your observations and conclusion that come with this thing. Okay, so from this observation, Rutherford continue and say, okay, okay, I think I know what the structure of the atom is like already. Middle got stuff, very dense, got positive charge. Then later on, other people, remember the history of the chemistry stuff, other people discovered more stuff about the atom. Lah. So eventually we came to this model, structure of an atom. Okay. So here's an example. I just picked a random, a random element. So in the nucleus, actually, or oh, it's not just positive charge. Also got this neutron, uh, neutral charge, no charge one. Oh, they're all stuck together in the middle to form the nucleus. And then there will be a number of electrons outside in shells, just kind of swirling around the nucleus in the middle. This is one model of the atom. There are actually many models, okay? Um, but never mind, that's for quantum physics. Okay, so, six protons, six neutrons. Okay, this is how the structure of the atom look like. Now, what are protons and neutrons? You say, oh, means proton positive charge, oh, neutron negative. Okay, there's more stuff to know about that. These are the things you need to know uh, for physics. For proton, what is the mass? Well, this is given to you in your, 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 your data formula sheet. You can also find it in your calculator. Do you know how to find your calculator? Okay, so one another way instead of kg, sometimes you will say you will see people express it in terms of u. So one u is 1.66 times 10, I guess 67 is okay. Now. Negative 27 kg. It's just one u. Lor. What is u? Uh? Atomic mass you need. Uh? AMU, u, u, okay. And your proton charge is plus 1 E. What is E again? A uh? good reminder. E is an elementary charge, okay. Uh, 1.6 times 10, negative 19 coulombs. We have seen this before. And also remember, please remember, charge is quantized. Means all charge have to be a multiple of this E. 1 E, 2 E, 3 E, 4 E, okay. Because charge is based on these elementary charge units. Okay, and neutron, yes. What is the mass of a neutron? Good question. Neutron is actually the same mass as proton. Why is it like, oh, we'll figure it out why in the next, next video. Okay, neutrons, same size, same mass as proton. So you can just say the same thing. Also one U, not one Utama, but one U times 10, negative 27 kg. It's the same thing, rest mass of proton, rest mass of neutron. Charge le, no charge, so zero. The last one, our little baby electron. 
Now the electrons are way, way, way smaller than our proton. Although in this picture, they look kind of the same size, right? Actually, electron is much smaller, much, much, much smaller. You will get this in your data formula sheet. 9.1 times 10, you get 31 kg. Or, an easier way to remember it is, proton is 1u, right? So your electron is 1 over 1840u. Wow, where does that come from? Means your electron is almost 2,000 times smaller than your proton. 2,000 times smaller. It's like, okay, you go and think of something. Uh, find the size of something and find what is 2,000 times smaller. So it's very, very much smaller. Okay, the same thing equal to this. And what's the charge? Well, if proton is 1e, electron is negative 1e. So 1.6 well, you can say negative 1.6 times 10, negative 19 coulomb. That's your uh, charge of electron. So these are the basics you need to know about um, what forms the atom, what, what's in the nucleus, what's in an atom, all these kind of things. So here's some terminology to help us um, count the protons, count the neutrons and the electrons. Well, so first thing you want to know is nucleon number. Okay, nucleon just means what is inside that middle section. Okay, the clump here, what's in the nucleus, called nuclear number. Also, it's all the protons and neutrons add together. And uh, we use this A, usually A. Other, other uh, fields may use different alphabets, but okay, A. Proton number, of course, just number of protons inside the nucleus. Huh? So if you go back to the earlier example, our nuclear number will be all these fellow add together. So nuclear number, uh, we call this A, will just be 12. Proton number, you can't know how many protons, or oh, it's already written there, ma. so Z is 6. The proton number is the one that determines what element it is. La. The nuclear number, we'll see why in a bit. Okay, so if you want to express this element, I call this element X. La. Atom X. I can write it this way. So X will be, you put your nuclear number on top, proton number down there, like this. Okay, so just write what is this, and write what is this. So for this particular element, I can say this element X has 12 as its nuclear number, protons and neutrons, and proton number of 6. Oh, this looks like what element? Ah? Ah, go check your periodic table, see what element is this, 12, 6, 6. 6, just look for the proton number 6. Anyway, one more thing to know is isotopes. What are isotopes? Isotopes are basically nuclei with the same proton number, different nucleon number. So the same proton number, different nucleon number. For example, carbon. So this is an example of what an isotope, isotope is. Same proton number, different nucleon number. Carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. What's the difference there? You see, oh, the proton number of all of them is the same. Oh. 6, 6, 6. That's what makes them carbon. Okay, 6 protons. But then the neutrons... 6, 7, 8. So this other fellas got extra neutrons. Ah. Okay, here and here. So this, this is what we call isotopes. Ah. Okay, this is this is the most common one, ah, the natural state, 98% ah, of it. Okay, the rest are if they happen to have extra neutrons, then they become then they are isotopes. Okay, so that's all for today's this video's uh, basics on terminology, how to think of nucleons, protons, and things like that. Alright, so, yep, that's all for today. In the next video, we will look at nuclear reactions. Okay, we'll continue to that. But this is it, basics, structure of the